Brand new iPhones, Apple Watches, AirPods, Macs, iPads are all coming this year and so much more. And also one of the interesting things this year is that Apple is bringing their best features to their most budget focused products. Let me tell you why Apple is doing things differently this year, the top 10 or so new products we should see, and why there is something coming this year from Apple that everyone should get excited about. Okay, so I'm gonna to try to do my best to sort of break things down chronologically. So starting in the beginning of the year, I think the first couple of big products we got were of course the launch of Apple Vision Pro. Whether you loved it or hated it, it has launched now available for 3,000 bucks. We also got some brand new M3 MacBook Airs, both 13 inch and 15 inch offerings. Not the biggest upgrade there, but if you were uh, someone with an older MacBook Air, you will like this upgrade. And then that was kind of it so far this year. There's some cases and stuff like that, but let's get all the new stuff, shall we? The next few products we should be seeing from Apple soon, like very soon, are some all new iPad models specifically some new iPad Pros and an all new version of the iPad Air. Now, if you remember last year in 2023, Apple didn't give us any iPad hardware updates at all. I think there was like something in China, but really it was nothing for the year. So every iPad model is technically in the running for an update. We could see a number of spec bumps and updates and stuff like that. But really the headlining features here are gonna be three things. Two models of the iPad Pro and one model of the iPad Air. On the iPad Pro side, of course, we're gonna get what you'd expect, the M3 processor bump, probably some better battery life improvements, under the hood, stuff like that. And also one of the big features here is the screen technology upgrade, moving from mini LED over to OLED for both the 11 inch and 12.9 inch model. And just like an OLED TV, this is just gonna be a really great visual experience on the iPad. If you're a fan of playing games, watching movies, you want some of the best picture quality you can get in 2024, these iPad Pros are gonna be absolutely amazing, especially as many of us just watch movies and consume a lot of content on our iPads, it's a great device. This is going to be amazing and should be giving these screens a nice boost in upgrade. Though we also might be seeing a boost in price as well. OLED iPad Pros are expected to be a bit more expensive. So uh, just uh, be prepared for a little sticker shock there once these prices go live. Um, but uh, yeah, iPad Pro upgrades are finally coming and OLED is probably gonna be the big feature we will see soon. The other big story is with the iPad Air, because yeah, there are some spec bumps and improvements and stuff like that, but the big story is that Apple, of course, is actually listening to their customers, and many of us want a big screen iPad experience, but we don't need all the bells and whistles of the iPad Pro, and we especially don't need the price tag of the iPad Pro either, and that's why Apple is going to enter in a new contender called basically, well, the larger version of the iPad Air, a 12.9 inch version of the iPad Air that gives you the big iPad screen experience with some, you know, not downgraded, but just less elegant screen technology that's still gonna give you the experience you want, and most importantly, not break the bank. And then between now and later on this summer in June, there's some stuff we could see, but probably not. Apple is relatively quiet between now and WWDC later on this summer. So don't expect any major progress or many major product announcements between now and then, but WWDC does have a couple of exciting products and software releases we should see that hopefully are gonna be worth the wait. For example, a couple of big software upgrades should be coming this year, specifically with a uh, sort of uh, emphasis on AI and uh, those sort of smarts and machine learning capabilities. It seems like that's sort of the buzzword of 2024. Apple is leaning in on making uh, new AI experiences and making Siri better. And that seems to be the big theme of their software this year, especially with their cornerstone of iOS. And we're hearing right now that iOS 18 is actually said to be one of the biggest software upgrades the iPhone has ever received, if not actually the biggest software update the iPhone has received ever since it came out all the way back in 2007. So hopefully this is an exciting redesign. Hopefully this is packing some new features, uh, but uh, hopefully these rumors remain true. If you're hoping for a big iOS update that's gonna be feature packed and exciting, that should be coming in June. We get our peek at that uh, with iOS 18. And of course, if you have a developer account and stuff like that, you can get early access and the general release will happen later on in the fall when the new iPhones launch, but more on that in a moment. Now, WWDC has not been a moment just for Apple to release new software, but we also started to increasingly see some new hardware as well. If you're hoping for Apple Vision Pro 2 or Apple Vision Air, that's not in the cards this year, folks. Apple Vision Pro is out. You can go to an Apple store and try it, uh, but it seems like we wouldn't be getting the next iteration of that product until late 2024, 
early 2025. So it's gonna be a bit until Apple updates that, which is probably a good thing, seeing as if you spent $3,000 on that, you wanna enjoy your new product while you can. It seems like Apple is taking some time to really refine that second gen, so that's not coming anytime soon. But what we could be getting at WWDC are a couple of new Mac hardware upgrades, bringing the entire lineup up to M3. For example, Mac Mini, Mac Pro, and Mac Studio still are not on the M3 architecture, so that might be a good time for Apple to sort of bring us an update with those machines on M3. I should mention we've heard rumors for a while about some updates to Apple displays. There was talk for a while that Apple could do a new uh, Pro Display XDR equivalent. Maybe we could see a mini LED update to the Apple Studio display. We don't have any concrete rumors on that right now, but just saying that in addition to Macs, maybe we could see some Pro adjacent peripherals and accessories also make their debut, but nothing set in stone just yet. But just something to sort of consider, hopefully something we see later on this year. Then throughout the summer, Apple, of course, is gonna to continue to work out the bugs and kinks with their software. There's the iOS 18 developer release, public release. You can sort of get uh, your hands on all the new software stuff. And then comes the fall, coming in September, where we should be getting a bunch of new exciting Apple products that'll be launching this year to really end the year on a high note. For example, there has been some talk about a potential big Apple Watch release happening this year. I think it's been, has it been a decade or so since the original Apple Watch? I think the unveil happened in 2014, but released in 2015. So the timeline's a little murky on that, but we're hearing that this could be sort of an anniversary edition that could be cool. It could be Apple Watch 10, Apple Watch X. Some significant upgrade could be coming to the Apple Watch this year in terms of a new design, some new bands. We're hearing the band architecture could be different. So your existing bands wouldn't work with the new watch, but hopefully it brings some new health and fitness features better battery life, better improvements. It's been very interesting to track these rumors because we haven't gotten anything concrete on what could be happening or not with the Apple Watch this year. But I will tell you this, I think that many of us can agree that this as a new feature on Apple Watch uh, Series 9 and Apple Watch Ultra 2 basically just shouldn't have even been updates. The updates to the Apple Watch were so minor that hopefully uh, Apple was sort of preparing their uh, you know, time and expertise on what could be coming this year in 2024. Hopefully it was worth the wait and we get some significant Apple Watch upgrades this year. No word on what could be coming with Apple Watch Ultra 3. Not sure if it's just gonna be Apple focusing on one new Apple Watch version. Maybe we get an Ultra 3. Not sure how that timeline's gonna work out, but could potentially be a big year for the Apple Watch, hopefully with an exciting reveal of Apple Watch Series 10 or Series X. And then of course, there's one of the big stars of the show for the year, the iPhone 16 lineup, which is shaping up to be pretty exciting. We're seeing some larger displays, hopefully coming to the 16 Pros. Those will be a jump from 6.1 to 6.3 on the 16 Pro, 6.7 to 6.9 on the Pro Max. Probably no ultra iPhone this year, but the slew of other things you'd expect to see on upgrades for iPhone, you're gonna get camera upgrades. We're gonna see a dual vertically stacked system on the 16 and 16 Plus. Some new colors of course are coming, a new couple of buttons, the button expanding to the entire iPhone 16 lineup. We're gonna be getting a new capture button on every single iPhone as well this year. Of course, better battery life, better A-series chip, better performance, efficiency, all the regular stuff you'd expect to see on the iPhones is coming later on this year. And then probably the big story besides the capture button and the large displays could be a 48 megapixel uh, sensor upgrade for the ultra wide lens on the 16 Pro phones and Apple bringing the 5X telephoto zoom lens from the big boy 15 Pro Max to the smaller 16 Pro later on this year. And then there are some wild card updates that could be coming at any point throughout the year. We've heard these products are coming sooner than later, but there's no concrete timeline on the release. For example, AirPods Max. It seems like it's been forever since Apple debuted those uh, headphones and it kind of was. It was back uh, in the fall of 2020 before the end of the year is when we got them. And now nearly four years later, they should be getting a slight update. Not anything crazy, but maybe some new colors and USB-C port. So not sure if that's really worth waiting for if you want AirPods. Max, might as well get them now if you can get them on a deal, but a new version should be coming. And then two other sets of AirPods that will be interesting. One is a more budget focused version that is rumored to be around $99 and be sort of a lower cost version of AirPods Gen 3. And then a mid tier AirPods that is not AirPods Pro, but it gets a lot of the Pro features. So active noise cancellation, the shorter stem design, those could be coming to really round out the AirPods lineup. So you'd have a budget version, you'd have a really solid mid 
mid-tier version, you have AirPods Pro and then AirPods Max. And honestly, the uh, first two, sort of the more budget conscious versions are actually shaping up to be better than the higher end AirPods Pro that won't be getting up until next year and AirPods Max, which are great headphones, don't get me wrong, but for the price are very expensive and are getting a really minor upgrade this year. And then finally, there is one wild card that could make its debut this year, maybe this fall, maybe it doesn't come until 2025, but it is shaping up to be super exciting. And that again is Apple putting a good, a bit of oomph into their lower cost offering. And that is iPhone SE 4, because we're hearing this is the year that Apple's budget iPhone, or hopefully maybe next year, is gonna be the, the generation at least that it gets a lot of love, going with a 6.1 inch OLED display, sort of a similar design to the iPhone 14. The home button is out. Face ID is in, it's gonna be getting the action button, it's gonna be getting USB-C, a camera upgrade. Honestly, a lot of love is going to the next version of iPhone SE that should be really, really exciting when it launches. We had heard it's not gonna be coming until next year, but the amount of leaks we've gotten over the last couple of weeks maybe suggests an earlier than expected release. Not gonna say I'd count on that, but I will say that uh, it is shaping up to be really exciting that Apple is giving some bigger upgrades to their more budget conscious, lower end devices. Something Apple doesn't typically do, which is gonna be really nice to see. And I think with that, that's what we think we know about 2024 for Apple. New M3 Max, new iPads, new Apple Watch, maybe a couple Apple Watches, new iPhones, uh, and then maybe some new AirPods. A uh, pretty busy year for what could be coming. And then 2025, don't even get me started, more stuff happening there as well. So that's what we know as of right now. Let me know your thoughts down below as to what you think we could see. Are you excited for this stuff? Are you not? Apple Watch Series X, Series 10, are you all in on that? Your thoughts on when we could see events, probably an event in June, maybe one or two in the fall. I don't know, that scary fast event. Could have been an email, but maybe they'll do two events again this fall. Let me know your thoughts on that down below. As always, I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much. Let me know your thoughts on the 2024 lineup down below. Thank you guys as always. I am Robert Rosenfeld from the Apple Circle, and I'll see you all in the next one.